But when the Spirit of God comes, He doesn't come saying things. He comes to bring us into the reality, the spiritual reality of the things that Jesus is saying. Now wait, 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 wait. In God, because Jesus happens to be the Prince of Peace. So when Jesus comes, he knows that his presence makes available peace. So, but you need to receive the peace that is offered. So he tells you about peace. 90% of us will not want to accept it. Only a few people will say, okay, I'm, I'm willing. Oh, Jesus. Then he will impact that peace. That's how Jesus does it. But the Holy Ghost will not preach peace. The Holy Ghost will take you into the impartation of that peace first. Wait. When you have experienced that peace, you become the one to talk about the peace. Everyone that met with the Holy Spirit was burdened with the responsibility of a message to the extent to which he brings you into reality. Whereas Jesus will bring education, then when people cry out, yes, we want what you're offering, then he releases it. The Holy Spirit wants to bring experience so that you will be the one to testify. So everyone that genuinely encounters the Holy Spirit has something to say. And if you are saying nothing, you encounter nothing. What we need on this campus are people that have encountered reality. Because when you are talking to somebody about reality, it's like telling the person about your life. Your life is concrete. Your life is experiential. So you can talk about yourself. If you are 31 years, you are 26 years, at least for 26 minutes, you can talk about yourself. So if you encounter the Holy Spirit, it is an experience and you can talk about it you have authority to talk about it because you have experienced if we have medical students in our midst and they have started teaching you about plasmodium and plasmodium as if my memory serves me right we have plasmodium uh, falciparum plasmodium vivax and plasmodium malaria so when plasmodium vivax is transmitted into your bloodstream. That is what is responsible for the sickness called malaria. As a medical student, you know the symptoms you were taught in class. So when someone comes and sits before you and that has the experience of mal malaria, for instance, you know it because you were taught, but the person knows it because he is experiencing it. So the person knows it more than you. Because for him, it is experiential. The Holy Ghost doesn't leave you with empty knowledge. No. He leaves you with the kind of knowledge that can be secured on the experiential platform. So Jesus said that when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all aletia, all reality. He doesn't need to talk because he brings you into the reality of the things he would have said. So you see, his own approach builds the capacity for you to handle reality. And that's why he doesn't experience the same frustrations Jesus experiences when he comes to speak. Because his ministry is what gives you the capacity that Jesus was looking for. Jesus said, he shall glorify me. He will enlarge me. He will magnify me. So without the Holy Spirit, we can never know the reality of the person of Jesus. No, it is impossible. You cannot know any spiritual thing whatsoever if the Holy Spirit were not there. 
for instance his presence right now is to give validity to give experiential dimensions to to the reign of christ do you still remember the day of pentecost peter's explanation of the mysterious day of pentecost was that the jesus that you crucified god resurrected him and right now in heaven he has been coronated lord and christ and this manifestation you see on earth is that he released his spirit are you there to make efficacious the throne that jesus has ascended in the heavenlies so right now in order for you to understand the majesty of jesus that is only possible with an encounter with the holy spirit because the holy spirit came to make life make a life the reign of christ Amen. you will never know what the reign of christ is in your heart without the holy spirit he doesn't come to manufacture another interest he only comes to amplify that which is of christ the Bible says that he will glorify me. He will make my reality known. He doesn't come to do his own will or his own agenda. What he's here to do is to magnify me and bring people into the experience of my administration. So the only way I can know the mind of Jesus is when my heart locks on the Holy Spirit. What comes out of the Holy Spirit in terms of measures of spiritual knowledge is what is on the mind of Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is neutral. He doesn't bring his own interests, his own strategy, his own emphasis. He goes there selfless to provide the capacity for you to be able to commune with the reality of Christ. It's just like this microphone. It doesn't change my voice. And it will interest you to know that my voice is very, very low. It's the PA system that makes it possible for you to hear me. That's how the Holy Spirit is. It makes it possible for you to hear Jesus. Just like a PA system. It doesn't interfere with the discussion. It just creates the capacity for the interference to take place. Jesus said, he the next question to ask is how he answers it he says he would take off mine that which is mine that which he would take off it and he will apply it to you just like he bought he bought healing he paid for healing healing is his but the holy spirit can take it and make it available oh you are not here you know, I told you we already lost two, two aspects of the syllabus. He will take up mine. And he will make it available to you. It will become easy for us to explore the dimensions of Christ. And the dimensions of Christ are vast. And if you are going to keep pace on the journey of pilgrimage in Christ Jesus, then you will need to understand that the Holy Spirit comes to bring you and me into the reality of his government, the reign of Christ. The reign of Christ. Do you still remember the first message of, of the kingdom that was preached in the book of Matthew? Is repent for the reign of Christ is at hand. The reason why the town crier was dispatched to tell the, the nations of the world repent because the reign of christ is at hand was because the person of christ was in their midst and he came he did not come to cohabit he did not come to squat he came to reign if you notice the mandate with which the holy spirit was sent from the heavenlies in the book of psalms 110 verse 3 for the bible says that the lord said unto my lord 
sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So it means the father made a promise to the son. Now I'm going to bring you into administrative capacity and it will be my business to bring your enemies to bow at your feet. The next verse now tells us how God the Father intends to accomplish that. He says, the, rod, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. That's the Holy Ghost. We need to leave Zion, God's administrative headquarters. And that was what the day of Pentecost was about. The Holy Spirit came down with a mandate, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. He didn't come to squat. He didn't come to negotiate he came to establish rule. He came to establish dominion. So the proof that you have met the Holy Ghost is that the throne, the command tower of Jesus has been set in your heart. You now have a Lord over your life. If you, if you do not have the command tower, the voice of God that constrains you through the word of God, the voice of God that constrains you in the privacy of his whisper in your spirit to do the will of God, it's proof that you have not met the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit comes to establish the reign of Christ. With me. So I told you a story of how a lady came into my room naked. She might have tried that with many young men before and she knows it works that's why she came to try me but unfortunately for her it was not as if she was not attractive she was super attractive <laughs> but you know i don't do flattery i do truth okay, so i tell you so she was super attractive but unfortunately for her there was a rain a government that was upon my heart that government was more powerful than the attraction I had to her naked body. It was more powerful. I could not violate the authority of that government because of what my senses had picked. So if we look at your life and we don't see the presence of government, it means you have not met the Holy Spirit. And that's why, are you there? Are you here? Oh. Now, don't clap again, please. We're that's why Jesus said, when, when is an adjective of time, when the spirit of truth is come. These are the symptoms you are going to see. So if you don't see these symptoms, he has not yet come. He's on his way, but he has not yet come. When his influence comes, there are concrete ways we will know that he has come. The government of Christ, it will magnify it so much that that government of Christ becomes bigger than everything that the devil throws at you. If we don't find that in your life, we'll say, okay, she's born again, but the spirit of truth has not yet come. But when the spirit of truth is, is come. I need to stop that, but I need to ask you a question. Is it true that the spirit of truth has come to you? When I got employment into the oil industry, I got my promotions, I got my promotions, and I became a supervisor. A supervisor is a big man, big guy. I tell you, because I have five opportunities in one month to run and I was there for five. Maybe I would have been dead now. The money to tell you something. I need to tell you something quickly. You are not with me. You are not with me. I need to tell you something quickly. I know your name is Joy. Your name is You are capable of when we open the You don't know what you are capable of. If you experience what I'm talking about. They knew you with. I'm saying you are welcome. To. But unfortunately, they got the wrong chief. Because the real chief was sitting inside of my heart and the Holy Spirit made it so obvious. Imagine I could not run one. I did not. Those were the days when I needed a broken heart and a fat in pocket. People spoke about me from the back. They say he is a Jew. 
And the meaning of that is that you are the wrongest of all men, all guys. When his throne becomes enlarged in your heart, you will not look like your generation. <laughs> you will not have the same, the same desires. When they put you in the mix, you will not fit. Because there's something that the Holy Spirit has enlarged in your heart that holds sway over your life. It determines when you stand, it determines when you sit, it determines when you walk away, and it determines when you run. And the question tonight is, is it true that the spirit of truth has come to you? Because Jesus said, when he is come, these are the symptoms he will come with. Oh, we have people playing church. And like, they like the music, they like the lights and the colors will blend. But in them, the spirit has not yet come. Rise on your feet. Let's, let's see if we can pray. Listen. Those days I come from the lab because we finish from the lab around seven in the evening. I come from the lab to my room. I meet my roommates sleeping with all kinds of ladies. I drop my things, take my Bible, my books, and many of the people that were into that life felt that I was depriving my the Spirit of God will give you a different emphasis. The part of the uh, syllabus that I cut off is when Jesus spoke. The Bible says that it was the joy that was set before Jesus that gave him the impetus to endure the cross, endure today because the eyes of his spirit have been made to see glorious things. And one of them came to see me in my office. He said, this is why you did not accept our life. Dead. From all those late sin drained out all his gift. God showed me that. For his destiny is to stop dealing with what he was created to do. It's not fit. It's not fit. I stood in one of the nations who were in the stadium. Get behind that pulpit. I had seen that day before. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Oh, you're not, you don't understand what I'm talking about. I had seen that day before. It just came again in a flash. That was one of the visions he showed my heart while I was still on campus. That he would stand in the midst of a stadium to proclaim my glory. The power of God fell like rain. People walked out of wheelchairs. People, people, people dropped crutches. All kinds of crutches. I'd seen that day before. It was one of those glory visions that God showed me. So that I would not have time for the things that my generation were crazy about. The Holy Spirit will change your taste buds. He'll give you something different to live for. Something different to strive for. 